lost my children, lost my uh, housewife, cars, businesses, and I ended up homeless. So I was homeless on the streets for 14 months back in Manchester, England. And uh, like I say, on a couple of occasions, there was lots of suicide attempts because I, I just couldn't, I couldn't do this, you know, I, I really couldn't. And on two occasions it worked, it brought me back to life on the side of a road. But I had a huge spiritual intervention. It, it's, I've never said that before, Bernard. It was an intervention. It wasn't an experience for me. It was an intervention. And, you know, I, it's, a, it's a cold night. It's two or three o'clock in the morning. I'm walking on the back sides of Manchester, factories and offices, not a person in sight. And I dropped down to my hands and knees and I started to cry like a baby. And here's the, here's the crazy part, Vernon. I wasn't crying because uh, I'd lost my wife, my children, my, everything I worked for so hard. I was crying because the first time in my life I realized I couldn't stop drinking. And okay. I looked up to the sky. Uh, my, uh, you know, I had a bad experience at, at churches. I got molested, you know, and stuff like that. So never believed in God. But I looked up to the sky and this day it was pouring down. And I said, if there's a God up there, I can't do this on my own anymore. That's where he started, but 30 seconds later, a guy walked around the corner. He'd missed his last bus home from a Bible study. He'd been walking for an hour. He took this shortcut that he'd never taken before, and he'd come upon me. And he said, do you need help? And I said, yeah, I'm dying. Uh, and he said, I'm, I'm in recovery myself. I'm a Christian. You can come back to my house. And, and, and there was one more crazier than that, but that's where my recovery started. Wow. What about today? Do you... Do you still believe in a higher power? Oh, 100 percent. God is just well, what happened after that, Bernie? You know, that, that the next morning he said to me, Hey, Derek said, you can stay here for as long as you like, Rob, but you have to come to these 12 step meetings with me. And I'm like, God, oh, no, I I don't want to go. I've been there, I don't like them. But you know, I went and, and while I was there, everyone was sharing like they do, and, and across the room in this circle, this guy said, My name's John, I'm a recovered alcoholic. And I was like, what did he just say? You can't recover from this BS you're going through. But I met at the end of the meeting, I walked over and I said, will you sponsor me? My name's Rob. And he said, no, but I'll be your spiritual advisor for a period of 12 weeks. That's exactly how I said it. Okay. So he gave me his address every Wednesday. You know, I'd leave the house at six o'clock. I'd walk there for seven. I'd spend seven till eight with him and then I'd walk home for nine. I couldn't go or knock at his door any time before seven. And at eight o'clock or one minute two, he'd be walking me out the door straight. I thought I was strange, but, you know, uh, I spent 12 weeks with that guy every single Wednesday. So as I was getting well and understanding and, and doing all these great stuff and got to know God and stuff like that, on the last day, on the Wednesday, he said, Rob, your life's going to change from tomorrow. You, you've been chosen. You know, you're ready. And I'm like, what a load of crap. You know, I said, John, I'm in this guy's basement on a block mattress. Nobody knows I'm there. How's my life going to change? Vernon, the next day, I'm cleaning the house, and Derek came on, like lunchtime. He doesn't come on lunchtime. He said, Rob, the guy that sweeps the floor, part-time job, he just walked out. Do you want the job? He didn't even think about John. I'm like, yeah, man, of course I do. So later that week, that job turned into a full-time job. And then there used to somebody give me a little car to get to work and back, which was only work and back. He was banged up and battered. But uh, when I got my first paycheck, about two or three weeks after that, I went to the, because I thought John was right. I went to the gas station. I bought John a little teddy bear. It's only this big, so I could afford, and a card. And I wrote on the card, John, thank you for introducing me to God because he took the compulsion to drink away. And I went back to his house. When I got there, his apartment, it didn't look the same. But I banged on the door. The right-hand person came out in the right-hand apartment. She said, can I help you? And I said, yeah, where's, where's John moved to? And she said, John. I said, yeah, John, your neighbor. And she went, well, I've only been here three months and there's been no one living in that apartment for the three months that I know of. Wow. So I let her close the door. I thought, she's drunk or something. So I went to the left hand and I banged you know, on the door and this big guy came to the door. He's like, what do you want? I said, where's John moved to? Where's he relocated to? And he said, John who? I said, John, your neighbor, what's wrong with his? And he said, I have no idea what you're talking about. You're wasting my time because that apartment is derelict. If you walk in that apartment, you'll fall down to the basement. It's just, it's got signs on it. It's derelict. You can't go in there. So I'm like, what the hell's going on? Because I had the same address. So I goes back to the meeting where I'd met him three, three or four months before. 
And I said, when I walked in, the, the chair went, oh, Rob. And I said, cool, you recognize me. So of course we do. We can't, we can't not like, you know, recognize you. And I said, does John still come here? And he said, John who? I'm oh, are you serious? I'm over near the coffee machine. We're talking about going to his house, blah, 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 blah. And he said, Rob, you were over near the coffee machine speaking to yourself. Never found that man, Vernon. Wow. And we put a detective agency on it once we started the business picked up. We could never find him. But what he taught me today is 95% of what we do here. That's why our success rate is around 97, 98%, where the norm is about 3 or 4%, is that was the spiritual intervention I talked about. 